You're back. Never left. Never left. Never left. But I think it's safe to say that you've been through hell and back the last couple of years. No, I think we're living in hell. Why do you say that? We still got breast cancer. And I know there's a cure here on this earth. Ain't no money in the cure. Can we talk about Tracy Morgan today? Tracy Morgan of 2016. Yeah. Who are you? The same person I was in 2014. Introspective, kind, loving, not ashamed, all of that. Not changed. Just got close, a little bit more close. I was always close to God. Just got a little bit more closer. You tend to get that way when you're on, knocking on death's door. But there has to be something different. When you've gone through what you've gone through, there has yeah, to well, be something different. Yeah, well, I haven't seen different. it yet. I, I'm still searching. I'm still looking. And it hasn't come to me yet. I'm still doing what I've been doing. What I love to see about you as I sit here across me today is that the Tracy Morgan that I have watched on TV, the Tracy Morgan that I followed on SNL, and on mm -hmm. and on and on, you look the same. You sound the same. I feel like. I just see all. That's what you feel. You want to know why the dinosaurs ain't here no more? They ain't evolved quick enough. I just evolved. We all are. Every day, I'm not the same person I was five years ago. I'm not the same person I was five seconds ago. I'm all that and then some. Better. All that in a bag of, bag of chips. Better. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about what you are involved in right now, the comedy festival. Right. Last time, I understand last time you did this was 2011, but this is a big year to do this. You're a headliner. Yeah. And it does sort yeah, of feel like Yeah, but the last time I did Carnegie Hall, I was immature. I was young. I was evolving. I wasn't bad. I was just 150 degrees from good. But now I'm coming back and I've been through some stuff. Been through some stuff. So the set this time is going to be more, much more different than it was the last time I did Carnegie Hall. I've matured. I, I've evolved. Well, what's it going to be like to walk on that stage? This is a big festival. You're with your fellow brethren. Well, the way I comedians. approach it is like walking on that stage with everything I got. I'm leaving it all up there, 110%. I'm just going to give my audience everything. It's me. Is there an element to you now, sort of not afraid? Because. Never been. That was my strong point in comedy, my vulnerability. I'm more, even more vulnerable now. <laughs> People want to know what it is to get hit by 18-wheeler, doing 65 miles per hour, carrying 85,000 pounds of frozen food in the back. They want to know what it is to buy. You got to understand, babe. This is big. The profile is big because I was involved in probably one of the two biggest car accidents ever in history, which was mine's and Princess Diana's. Big. So I talk about it. Because if you don't laugh about it, you're going to cry about it. I'm done crying. I'm just sharing. Just sharing now. Making people feel better. Being inspiration for those, not just being funny, but being more than that. Trying to be inspire, inspire those in the audience. They see me up there two years later doing stand up. They say, wow, if he could do it, I could do it. I'm fine with that. That's enough for me. It seems to me that it's a comeback story. And again, you didn't leave, but you took a hell of a hit with that bus accident, figuratively yeah. and literally, and you needed to fight back. That, and what I was saying to my producer earlier today was, what is so- Well, it's not a comeback story. I think it's an inspirational story. He's just Rocky. Only difference is he's box album comedian. So I don't think it was, he, Rocky always boxed, always did comedy. It's an inspi inspi inspirational story, not a comeback. Are you okay, are you okay sort of um, carrying that torch, so to I'm speak? I'm fine. Because he wouldn't put nothing on me I couldn't handle. And I know that. I'm fine. Are you going to be nervous when you walk on stage? No, I'll be excited. Nervous is a negative word. Excited is the same emotion, just the other side of the coin. Like love and hate, same emotion. I'm excited. Nervous people can't wait till it be over. I can't wait for it to start. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Let me ask you this, because I was saying this to my producer earlier. For a comedian to make it 
to the upper echelon of a business that is as rough as it gets. You, you can, talking about superstar? Yeah, I'm talking you about being a You can be funny superstar. all you want to, but you got a personality. I'm talking about one that can pay the bills. You talking about you talking about being a star? I'm talking about being a star. I'm talking That's about personality, baby. They ain't got nothing to do with funny. Well, it also has to do personality. With what personality? Who personality? When per personality? So you did it once, though, and then with the fight that you have had to go through after the accident, I'm sure there are people out there that'll say, "Oh yeah, you made it into the upper echelons of this career. You're a superstar comedian." The fact that you're going to do it twice, though, the fact that you were at the top of your game, you had TV shows, specials, SNL, on and on and on. You did everything that any young comedian or maybe any seasoned comedian would want to do. You did it. It was in the books. Then this accident happened. And now you're doing it again. Once, maybe luck. Twice? My, my career wasn't built off uh, chance. My career is built off of choices. The first time was good choices. This time is good choices. So, you know what the naysayers, you know, I'm just doing the same things that I did before. I'm doing the same thing I just, I just, just did before. When, when, when Peyton was with Indianapolis, he won a Super Bowl. Then he went and won one with Denver. He didn't change that. He did the same thing. I don't know any way I'm gonna be, but then be me. I take it one show, one day at a time. I used to be, when I first started, I used to try to do a million things at one time, then I look around and I did nothing. So now one thing at a time. That's how I approach it, so that I don't get overwhelmed, so I don't get stuck. I just one thing at a time, I focus. But you don't need to do it for the money. When it's time, no. Well, that's, I never did it for the money. I love this. I said it publicly before, if I couldn't do comedy, I'd die. I'd die. I love it. I love making people laugh. I love seeing them laugh. I love them walking out of here feeling good. Do you think that's in part why you lived? I don't know. You would have to ask God that when you get there. Because I know we're going to see each other again. You ask God that when you get there. He'll talk to you. He'll tell you. Are you here? You figure that out. That's between you and him. You'll be fine. One more thing before I let you go. Because you are a comedian and you are somebody who has a pretty hysterical take on the way things are going these on days. On life. Now I got a funny take on heaven. <laughs> I was there. They partying up there, man. They partying up there. Talk to me about the election. No, I won't do that. What about, what about the state of things today? I won't do that. Is it going to be part of your set? I don't get involved in it, no. I don't discuss politics. So you said your set, though, especially for the comedy festival, is going There's to be There's too much about other things happen socially than deal with politics. I'm not, politics to me are politics. I love everybody. Let's leave it at that. So tell me something a little bit about the set that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Do you have it planned out yet? I mean, it's Saturday. Are, do you have it planned maybe, out yet? Maybe. You've got to come and see. You gotta come to Carnegie Hall and see. Can I have like a little, a little? Listen, fun? this is what it is. My set is not just a comedy show. My show is an experience. 